you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the game where we aim for the obscure and we ignore the obvious. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Al. I'm from Newcastle and this is my mother-in-law-to-be, Melanie. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Louise. This is my friend Emma and we're oh. from Swansea. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Simon. This is my husband Jeremy and we're from Salisbury. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Lee, and this is my wife, Abby, and we are from South London. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. My new shy are his meat and potatoes, his carrots, his peas, cooked à la française with spring onion and mint. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Well. Well. Mother-in-law to be. <laughs> I mean, that's a risk, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, listen, we've had mothers-in-law and fathers-in-law on before, but at least at that point you're already married. So what's the worst that can happen? But to be <laughs> speaks though of a, obviously a very strong bond and a very I strong so. relationship. I, I believe suspect. so. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. So Sands and Patrick didn't win the jackpot last time, so we're adding another one thousand pounds to it. So today's jackpot starts off. At £5,000. There it is. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> All you have to remember is this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round gets eliminated, so keep your scores nice and low. Very best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is... History by month. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..historical events that happened in April. Richard. I mean, that seems a bit random to me, but th listen, this is what we're doing. Uh, seven questions on each board to things in history that happened in the month of April. Why April? I don't know. Well, let's see how much people know about it. OK, so we are looking for the answers to these clues. They all happened in April. Here is our first board of seven. Fletcher Christian led a mutiny on this ship, April 1789. This US president was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth, April 1865. The first modern Olympic Games were held in this city, April 1896. This country received the George Cross for bravery, April 1942. This Soviet cosmonaut became the first man to travel into space, April 1961. This horse made history by winning the Grand National for the third time, April 1977. And Joseph Ratzinger was elected as new pope, taking this name and regnal number, April 2005. I'll read those clues again. Fletcher Christian led a mutiny on this ship, the US president was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. The first modern Olympic Games were held in this city. This country received the George Cross for bravery. This Soviet cosmonaut became the first man to travel into space. This horse made history by winning the Grand National for the third time. Joseph Ratzinger was elected as new pope, taking this name and regnal number. There we are. Al, welcome. Welcome. Lovely to have you here. Uh, tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm currently studying for a PhD in physics. Uh, I'm actually at Durham at the moment, so I've just, just started that. Which college, Durham? Uh, I'm in Eustonoff, postgraduate college. So. Eustonoff? Eustonoff, yes. What bit of physics are you doing? What, what, what's your uh, realm? It's thermally activated, delayed fluorescence. Enough! Enough. <laughs> Already so far above my head. What are your interests, Al? I like going to gigs and sort of collecting, collecting records, start collecting records in the past few years. Excellent. Good stuff. How are you liking our April? Uh, I'm confident on, on a few of them. A few more would be a guess, so I guess we're going first. I'll probably just play it a bit, bit safer. So, yeah, my answer is going to be the country that received the George Cross for bravery was Malta. Malta. Says Al, let's see if Malta is right. Did Malta receive the George Cross? It's right. And down he goes to 26. Very well done, Al. Good start to the show. Yeah, well done. I don't think you played it too safe there at all. Yeah. The wedding is safe. I, yes, good. <laughs> Son-in-law material, Melanie, yeah. I'd yeah. say. Thank you very much. Uh, Louise, welcome. Hello. Great to have you from Swansea. Yes. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, well, I'm married uh, with four children. Um, we've got a six-year-old, a four-year-old and twin one-year-olds. 
Oh. So very, very busy. <laughs> that is busy. Yes. Do they look after each other a little bit? I always imagine twins would be a slightly easier prospect, putting to bed, yeah. for example. It's, it's a cross between loving each other and multiple pylon, to be honest, most of the okay. time, <laughs> fighting. And, yeah. yeah. So, it's, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. What, what are your interests, Louise? Um, oh, well, I'm a massive geek. I love Doctor Who and uh, anything to do with Marvel and superheroes, yeah. Good stuff. And uh, April. April. April, yeah. Um, some of them I, I kind of know. But again, I'm just going to go a little bit safe and I'm going to go with the US president, and that's Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. 26, the only score we have at the moment. 36 for <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, John Wilkes Booth, he was also, the previous month, he was uh, involved in a plot to kidnap Lincoln, which, uh, which was thwarted. But that happened in March, and so we don't care. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much indeed. Jeremy, welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here from Salisbury. Tell us all about yourself. I'm a priest, and although I'm what's laughingly called retired, I'm currently chaplain at a Cambridge college. That's very nice. Can we ask which Cambridge college? Corpus Christi. Cor and so how long have you been chaplain at, at Corpus? I've, I'm in my second term of a two-year appointment. In some college chapels, uh, the chaplain, bravely, I would say, takes the presenter in, in the responses, in the priests and responses. Do you sing those, or do you hand that over to one of your lay clerks? For 26 years, I was presenter of Salisbury Cathedral. So ah, I, I, I'm used voice. to that job. Ah, can I ask a question? Yeah. Are the two of you saying placenta? Because I don't think you can be. <laughs> placenta. Placenta. Yeah, I, placenta. I, I could tell you something rather f amusing about that. When <laughs> really? I, when I was introduced to the Princess of Wales, she asked me, and what does a placenta do? <laughs> I was tempted to say, you tell me, dear. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I pretended she'd said the word properly, placenta, and I told her what I did. <laughs> uh, now then, Jeremy. What would you like to go for on our board here? Well, there's one that cries out to be answered. Joseph Ratzinger took the papal name Benedict, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. Benedict the Sixteenth says, Jeremy, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Benedict the Sixteenth. It's right. 36 is our high score, 26 is our low. You pass the high score, you pass the low. Benedict, yeah, he said he prayed to God not to be elected. Uh, and he said, evidently, this time my prayer didn't work. <laughs> That's what he said. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And now, Abby, we come to you. Welcome back. Remind us all about yourself, Abby. So I am a analyst in the legal and compliance team for a private equity firm in Mayfair. So much for you by day. What else do you get up to? Tell us. Tell us something surprising about uh, <laughs> Um I am currently learning to crochet, um, and I also do a little bit of swing dancing as well. Swing dancing is quite involved, isn't it? It's a, a, quite a few steps to learn. But yeah. yeah How long have you been doing it for? Only a couple of years, so I'm still at the beginner stage, so I'll slowly work up to intermediate, hopefully at some point. OK. Does, does Lee join you in the swing no. dancing? <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> All right. Now, Abby, this board is all yours. Do you feel like filling in all our blanks? Uh, no. <laughs> it's probably a tough round for me. The only one I know um, is the horse, which I think is red rum. OK, that's going to be your answer, yeah. red rum. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said red rum. Red rum is right. 36 was our high number. 57 is our new high score. Shall we fill the rest of this board I in? I think we might. Uh, Fletcher Christian. Bounty. Mmm, bounty. That would score you 42 points, the first Model Olympic Games. Athens. Athens, absolutely. That would have scored 33. And the Soviet cosmonaut? Yuri Gagarin. Correct. It is Yuri Gagarin. 32 points for that. So Benedict the 16th is the best answer on the board, Jeremy. Well played. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through our first round. Let's have a look at those scores. Five, the best answer there. Well done, Jeremy and Simon. And then 26 is where we find Al and Melanie. 36 is where we find Louise and Emma. And then up to 57, Lee and Abby, our golden couple from the last show, currently our high scorers. So, Lee, you know what you have to do to 
put that right. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put some more clues to historical events that happened in April up on the board, and here they are. We have got this explorer discovered Botany Bay landing in Australia for the first time, 1770. This man was sworn in as the first president of the United States, 1789. This ocean liner sank on its maiden voyage, 1912. In an April Fool's hoax, BBC Panorama claimed this type of pasta was harvested from trees, 1957. An explosion on board this moonbound spacecraft threatened the lives of its crew, 1970. The Good Friday Agreement was signed in this city, 1998. And former Iraqi leader whose statue was toppled in Baghdad using an armoured vehicle, 2003. I'll read those clues again. This explorer discovered Botany Bay, landing in Australia for the first time. This man was sworn in as the first president of the United States. This ocean liner sank on its maiden voyage. In an April Fool's hoax, BBC Panorama claimed this type of pasta was harvested from trees. An explosion on board this moonbound spacecraft threatened the lives of its crew. The Good Friday Agreement was signed in this city and former Iraqi leader whose statue was toppled in Baghdad using an armoured vehicle. There we are. Lee, welcome back. Thank you. Good to have you with us once again. Remind us about yourself, Lee. Um, I'm a freelance writer and I look after our three-year-old puppy. Well, it's not a puppy, it's a dog now. What sort of dog is it? A uh, little Yorkshire Terrier. She's, oh, well, she's a little runt, so well, she's about this big. Yorkshire Terrier, two walks a day? Minimum. 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 I mean, how, long are the, how long are your walks? Half hour, minimum. Minimum. Again. See, that's quite good. It's all right, it gets me out of the house. Very good. Now, Lee, there you are on 57. Yeah. You're the high scorers. You've got a lovely new board here. Yeah. Make sure you find a nice low-scoring answer there. Yeah. I'm going to go with the April Fool's hoax, and I yep. believe they claim that spaghetti grew, uh, grew on trees. Spaghetti. OK. No red line. You're the high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said spaghetti. <laughs> 38 for spaghetti. Takes your total up to 95. Uh, yeah, among those hoaxed was the then Director General of the BBC. Really? Yeah, can you believe it? Wouldn't happen these days. We have a no. very, very clever DG. DG very do. brave, very oh. clever. And very handsome. Handsome, exactly. So strong. <laughs> very clever man. I forget your name, but you're a very clever man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Simon, welcome. Thank you. Great to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, well, I'm an opera singer, amongst other things. I'm a sort of general dog's body as a musician. I, I conduct, I compose, I teach singing as well. Um, I'm a sort of jobbing chorus singer for opera companies, so I go to whichever company needs more singers to do a large production. So I sing at Welsh National Opera and English National Opera. And at the moment, I'm singing at Covent Garden. You're singing, you're there at the moment, are yep. you? What are you singing? Boris Goodenough. Wow, that's exciting. It's very Russian. Very Russian, very Russian Lots of indeed. Words. Now then, Simon, you are on five. If you can score 89 or less, you are through to the next round. Yes, history is not my best thing. I think I'm going to have to go for the bottom one and say the Iraqi leader was Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, says Simon. Here is your red line, nice and high. Get below that with Saddam Hussein. You're through to round two. It's right and you're through. With room to spare, 35, taking your total up to 40. Yeah, and that statue was replaced by the, the statue of an Iraqi family. Thank you very much indeed. So, Emma, welcome to Pointless. Hi. Good to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I am Emma, I'm from Swansea. Um, I work in a homeless charity based in Cardiff, but in Swansea. Um, so I'm a senior support worker and I've got a 19-year-old daughter. Very good indeed. And uh, what do you like getting up to for fun? Oh, fun weightlifting and going to the gym. Weightlifting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, 36 is your score at the moment. OK. 58 or less keeps you in the game. Right. History is not my strong point. OK. So I will go for the ocean liner sank on its maiden voyage. I'm thinking Titanic. OK, yeah. Titanic. OK. Titanic. Yeah. Here is your red line. Get below that, you're into round two. How many of our 100 people said Titanic? Oh. 78. 78 takes your total up to 114. Yeah, 14 years before that, an author called Morgan Robertson had written a novel called Futility, which was about a ship called the Titan, which crashed into an iceberg in the North Atlantic and sank. 
Spooky, wow, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. OK. So, Melanie, welcome. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, well, I live in Cumbria on the northern edge of the Lake District um, in the country, and um, I love to walk. I, walk. I have dogs, like these guys. That are... What dogs do you have? Now <laughs> we're on that thing. Right. I have one like this. But... <laughs> Was that bit... a, a Jack Russell? It is. <laughs> I've got a parson Jack Russell, so she's got Lovely. longer legs. Lovely. Uh, and a big Labrador. So I walk with them every day, but I love to do long distance walking. So I'd, every year I do one of the national trails that's in the UK. How much, much do you generally walk in a day? In a day, maybe sort of 15 to 20 miles. Yeah, so that's pretty good going, it is pretty isn't good, it? Yeah. OK, now there you are on 26. 87 or less right. keeps you in the game. OK. So. Do you want to fill in all our yeah. blanks? Why not? I think the explorers, um, Captain Cook, James Cook, and then George Washington, the president, maybe Apollo, one of them, and Belfast is a Good Friday agreement. So I think I'll say um, Belfast. OK, Belfast, says Melanie. Here is your red line. Get below that, you're into round two. How many people said Belfast? It's right and through you go. 33 for Belfast takes your total up to 59. Very well done. Well played, Melanie. I'm very comfortable now with this whole situation. I think <laughs> yeah. it's going to be absolutely fine. I, I can relax. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You took us through the board very nicely. You're right that it was James Cook. Uh, slightly better answer. James Cook would have scored you 26. You're right as well about George Washington. He would have scored you 38. And the moonbound spacecraft. Apollo 13. Apollo 13, yep. And that would have scored 19. That's the best answer on the board, so well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we find ourselves at the end of the first round. We have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. I'm afraid, Emma and Louise, it is you, our high scorers. You'll be back next time, and I'm sure we'll go much further then. But meantime, thank you very much for playing, Emma and thank Louise. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. There we are, down to three pairs. Well done. We've made it through to round two. Jeremy, our lowest individual scorer of that round. Very well done. Back, Jeremy and Simon, lowest team score. Uh, Al, though, mentioned in dispatches. Melanie, he's good. Mm. Third lowest score. So very well done there. And Lee and Abby, nice to have you with us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this afternoon is... Tennis. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many tennis players who have won successive Grand Slam singles titles as they could. Richard. Yes, yeah, simply looking for anyone who's won uh, two or more Grand Slam titles in a row since the beginning of the Open era, please. So any male or female player who's won two successive Grand Slam titles. Thank you very much indeed. So, Al, we come to you first. Right. I did used to follow tennis a little bit when I was younger. Uh, I know Pete Sampras won a few, though he's... Oop. So that's what I'm going to go for. OK, Pete Sampras. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Pete Sampras. It's right. Down it goes to 15. Not bad at all, Al. 15, Pete Sampras. Yeah, won Wimbledon and the US Open in 1993, Pete Sampras. Thank you very much, Richard. Simon, what are you thinking? I'm feeling anxious about it, but I'm going to say... I'm just going to say Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic, says Simon. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Novak Djokovic. It's right. 15 is the only score we have at the moment. 22 for Djokovic. Not bad. Yeah, he won four Grand Slam titles in a row, Djokovic, in 2015-2016. Uh, in Thank you, Richard. And uh, now then, Abby. So, tennis players who've won consecutive Grand Slam singles titles. Tennis isn't my strong suit, so I'm going to go with Boris Becker. Boris Becker, says Abby. Let's see how many of our 100 said Boris Becker. It's right. 22 is our high score, 15 is our low. 
We're looking down to 12 for Boris Becker. Very well done. Yeah, in 1989, he won Wimbledon and the US Open. It won fewer Grand Slams than some of the people on this list, so it's, uh, it's a good answer. Thank you, Richard. We're halfway through our second round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 12, well done, Abby. Best score of the past. Then up to 15, where we find Al and Melanie. Then to 22, Simon and Jeremy. So, Jeremy, yes, there's going to be a little bit of pressure on you to find a nice, low and obscure answer there. So, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? So then, Lee, yeah. male or female tennis players who've won successive Grand Slam singles titles. Um, I'm going to have to say Martina Hingis. Martina Hingis, says Lee. There you are on 12. Here's your red line. Can you get below that with Martina Hingis? Let's find out. How many people said Martina Hingis? That's right. I think that's good enough. Oh, it's look at that. Absolutely. Four. Takes your total up to 16. Very well done indeed, Lee. Terrific answer, Lee. Well played, yes. Won Wimbledon in 1997, then went on to win the US Open and then won the Australian Open in the uh, next year as well, so three in a row. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Jeremy, you're our high scorers. Hmm. I'm going to go for Bjorn Borg. Bjorn Borg, says Jeremy. No red line for you, as you are the high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bjorn Borg. It's right. Nineteen for Bjorn Borg. <laughs> Taking your total up to 41. Yeah, he had a habit of winning the French Open and Wimbledon. Now did it three years in a row. But one of the more unusual combinations: French yes. Open and then Wimbledon. Yeah, strange. Because the yeah, surface yeah. is so different. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Melanie, Melanie, you have to score 25 or less to get into the head-to-head. -head. Do you follow tennis? I used to, and I used to play quite a lot as well. So, I think I'm going to pick someone who was a big hero of mine when I was playing, and I'm going to say Margaret Court. Margaret Court mm -hmm. says Melanie. Here is your red line. Can you get below that red line with Margaret Court? Let's find out. That's right. And you are through. Very well done indeed. And that's down to one. Very well done. Look at that. Two of you on 16. Yeah, she once won six in a row, Margaret Court, which is some going. I'll give you some low scorers before we uh, go to the pointless answers. You'd have got ten points for Jimmy Connors and Steffi Graf. You'd have got nine for Chris Evert, four for Andre Agassi and Yvonne Gulligan, or Yvonne Corley. You've got two for Hannah Mandlakova, Naomi Osaka and Rod Laver. One for Justine Ennan, uh, Ken Rosewall, Kim Clijsters and, of course, Margaret Court. And there are four pointless answers. Very well done if you said one of these. Jennifer Capriati, Jim Courier... Mats Villander or Monica Seles. Uh, we'll take a look at the top three, the ones that most of our 100 people said. Rafa would have scored you 28. Serena Williams, 32. And Roger Federer right up the top there on 40. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we find ourselves at the end of our second round. We now have to say goodbye to our lowest scoring pair from round one. Simon and Jeremy, uh, nothing wrong with either of your answers. You've just ended up the high scorers. So we'll say goodbye to you now. We'll see you again next time when I'm quite sure you'll go much further. But in the meantime, thank you very much, Simon and Jeremy. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Al and Melanie, Lee and Abby. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for that jackpot, which currently stands at £5,000. <laughs> Where it's head-to-heads, so you now play as a pair. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. It'd wow. be nice to win, wouldn't it? Oh, that would be nice. And, you know, you'd be very happy with either of these pairs taken at home as well, wouldn't you? Imagine taking five grand home and not putting it towards the wedding owl. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, listen, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> Here comes your first question. And it concerns... ..occupational creatures. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you pictures now of five creatures which have an occupation in their name. Can you fill in the missing letters and tell us what these creatures are, please? 
Thank you very much indeed. So, what are the missing occupations? And here are the five clues. We have got... A. S-C-E-A-Y bird. B. S-X-O beetle. C. S-I-N-R dolphin. D. Great Northern DVR. And E. Water B A M N. There we go. Alan Melanie, you're our low scorers, so you go first. I think. Sarah. A. Do you think so? Yeah. I think possibly maybe second A, but I'm not too sure. We'll go with A. Right. Right. We know a few of them, but I think we'll go for A, and that's the secretary bird. The secretary bird, A. Say, Alan, Melanie, now, Lee and Abby. Do you want to talk us through the rest of the board? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> um, so, E is a water boatman. Um, D, great northern diver. Yeah. Um, the other ones, I am not Have sure. you got anything? No, maybe E. Oh, yeah, we'll go with E, water boatman. OK, E, Water Boatman. So we have Secretary Bird and Water Boatman. Alan Melanie, Secretary Bird for A. How many of our 100 people spotted that? That's right. And down it goes to 23. <laughs> Very well done. Lee and Abby, meanwhile, have gone for Water Boatman for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Well, 20 through 41. <laughs> for the Boatman, very well done. Alan Melanie, after one question, you're up 1 0. Yeah, you needed one of the two you didn't know to win that point, I'm afraid, because Great Northern Diver would not have won you the point. Uh, this is a big scorer with 82. But these other two are lower scorers. Now, let's start with B. This is actually the lowest scorer. If you know the job, it's an easy the one. Sexton. Sexton, like a church sexton. And that would have scored you 15 points. And the next one, maybe it's harder to fit in the letters of. Spinner? Spinner is the right answer. Spinner dolphin. And that would have scored you 19 points. So it used to be someone who worked with a loom, didn't it? And these days it's mm. probably someone who runs a uh, high intensity training class <laughs> at your local gym. <laughs> oh, I see. Thank you very much, Richard. OK, now here comes your second question. Lee and Abby, you get to answer it first, but you have to win it to stay in the game. Good luck. Let's find out what our question is all about. Actors in public life. Richard. So what we're going to do is show you a film that actor has been in and the international role they had, but who are they, please? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We have got The Terminator, Governor of California, 2003 to 2011, A.S. The Little Princess, US Delegate to the United Nations General Assembly, 1969 to 1970, S.T. Predator. Governor of Minnesota, 1999 to 2003, J.V. Hairspray, Congressman for California's 44th District, 1995 to 1998, S.B. And Salt, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Goodwill Ambassador, 2001 to 2012, A.J. I'll read those clues again. The Terminator, Governor of California, A.S. The Little Princess, U.S. Delegate to the United Nations General Assembly, S.T. Predator. Governor of Minnesota, J.V. Hairspray, Congressman for California's 44th District, S.B. And Salt, UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Goodwill Ambassador, A.J. OK, now, Lee and Abby, you get to go first. OK. Um, we'll go with one predator and the governor of Minnesota. I'm going to say that's Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Say Lee and Abby. Now then, Al and Melanie. Do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Uh, obviously, the Terminator, governor of California, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then the, right. ne the next one, Shirley Temple. And then I don't know Hairspray. Do you know Hairspray? Yeah, possibly Sonny Bono, uh, but I'm not too sure about that. Salt is Angelina Jolie. Actually, Shirley Temple. That's quite popular. It's little Prince, I, little Princess Shirley Table quite popular. I don't know. I'd probably say personally go Salt and Angelina Jolie, but that would be. Go on then. It's all in my head. <laughs> yeah, go on. Salt, Angelina Jolie. Okay, Angelina Jolie. He's setting himself up there. Yeah. <laughs> <Isn't> he? <laughs> 
That was I a mean, high risk strategy, to be fair. Oh, there was I you had mean. such an easy out there. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have taken it. I think, yeah, I yeah. think so. Anyway, let's see what happens. So Lee and Abby have gone for Jesse Ventura. Let's see if that is right for Predator and Governor of Minnesota. How many people said it? Three. Well done, Lee and Abby. Al and Melanie, meanwhile, have gone for Angelina Jolie, the SALT and UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Goodwill Ambassador. How many of our 100 people said Angelina Jolie? <laughs> Down goes to 31. Well done, Lee and Abby. Just what we needed from you. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. It's a very good answer, Jesse Ventura. Now, uh, what you really want, Al, is for Shirley Temple not to be a better answer than uh, <laughs> Angelina Jolie. Let's see. Shirley Temple would have scored you... 28. Could be a lot worse. Uh, it's not too bad. Could be a lot worse. I tell you what is a lot worse. There is an answer that would have beaten Jesse Ventura. And that's Hairspray. And, Melanie, you said... Funny Bono. It's the right answer. Oh. Would have scored one point. <gasps> they scored one point. Very well done if you said that at home. <laughs> Very well done if you agreed with someone whose daughter you're about to marry at home on that one. <laughs> and the top one there, of course, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Big score, though. Would have scored you 86. Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes the decider. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question today is all about... Dams and their rivers. Richard. We are going to show you the names of five dams now and the uh, countries in which they are situated, but what rivers are these dams on, please? Very, very best of luck to both teams. Thank you very much. Let's reveal our five dams. Here they come. We have got Ardna Krusha, Ireland. Aswan High Dam, Egypt. Hoover Dam, United States. Three Gorges, China. And Ataturk, Turkey. I'll read those clues again. Ardna Krusha, Ireland. Aswan High Dam, Egypt. Hoover Dam, United States. Three Gorges, China. And Ataturk, Turkey. There we are. Alan Melanie, you will go first again. What do you reckon? I would say that. I would say that. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, uh, we're going to go with the Three Gorges and the Yangtze. The Yangtze. Say Al and Melanie. Now then, Lee and Abby, do you want to talk us through all those other rivers? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> the Aswan High Dam, I'm guessing, that is the Nile. Um, Hoover Dam, maybe, maybe the Mississippi. Under Crusher in Ireland would be maybe the River Liffey. Try it. I'll take a punt on Ardna Crusher and say the River Liffey. The Liffey for yeah. Ardna Crusher. So we have the Yangtze and the Liffey. Al and Melanie have gone for the Yangtze for the Three Gorges. Let's see how many of our 100 said that. That's right. Good answer. Down it goes. Yangtze down to 20. Very well done. Uh, Lee and Abby, meanwhile, have gone for the Ardna Crusher and have said the Liffey. Let's see if the Liffey is right. No. Bad luck, bad luck, but exactly the punt you needed to take. Uh, but I'm afraid on this occasion it didn't pay off. Well done, Al and Melanie. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, you had to go for it. Uh, it would have got you through to the final as well, actually, but it was the Shannon. <sighs> Shannon, that would have scored you 15 points. The one you did know, the Nile, was a much too high scorer, as you imagined. It would have scored you 56. Now, the Hoover Dam... Near the Hoover Dam? Near the Grand is. Canyon. Colorado. Colorado River. Would have scored you 18. And the best answer on the board is the bottom one, uh, Ataturk Dam is on the Euphrates. And that would have scored two points. So very well done if you said Euphrates at home. Thank you very much, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, Lee and Abby, I'm afraid it's you double head-to-head. -head. So <laughs> yeah. lots to be proud of across your pointless career. But uh, <laughs> I'm sorry you never made it into the final and got that trophy. But thank you so much for playing Lee and Abby. Brilliant. <laughs> but for Alan Melody, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Alan, Melanie, you've seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy.
You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £5,000. There it is. <laughs> oh. Do you know what? I think on the top table, I think a, a couple of pointless trophies. Yeah, we'll just look. Well, maybe on the cake. <laughs> no, very well done. You've played so well. Fantastic. What a pair. It's brilliant. Decent partnership. This bodes very, very well indeed, I'd say. <laughs> Do you mean for the show or for life? I think for the show. <laughs> oh, the life? For life yeah. I wasn't thinking about that. We care much less about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I think for life. That's very, very good indeed. And we're delighted to send you away with the trophies. But can we send you away with a cheque for £5,000? That would be really yeah. exciting. What do you want to see come up? Anything to do with Newcastle United would be nice for me. Yeah, and I'll be fine, really. <laughs> I like, I'm into arty things and culture, literature, things like that. OK, well, <laughs> very, very best of luck. Let's see what appears on the board for today. Today's selection is... A Star is Born casts Mary, Queen of Scots, Lower League European Football, Antarctica. I mean, I can... Mm. I can what do we think? I can take a point on Lower League European Football. Well, I've seen the latest and the one before Star is Born, but I can't... Can you, not, you, no. know, you said yourself you're not going to act as... Well, why, I trust you. You trust me? Yeah. Right, OK. Lower League European football, please. He's taking you... <laughs> <sighs> I mean... Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're looking for any of the following three, please. We are looking for any team in the 2018-2019 season who played in Italy's Serie B. It's the second league in Italian football. We're looking for any team in Germany's Zweite Bundesliga. Or we are looking for any teams in Spain's Segunda División. So any of those teams in the second tier in Italy, Germany and Spain. That's the men's leagues in 2018-2019. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. You don't have to answer all three, just focus on whichever categories you like the look of. Are you ready? Yes. Let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Right, well, we went to see Tenerife in the second division against Valladolid, so that's two, I guess. Uh, Rayo Vallecano. Pop. San Sebastian? What's that? Uh, San Sebastian, where I saw Sociedad today play in the Premier Division. Okay. Uh, second, Germany's two. Union Berlin just got promoted. That's a big, big story. The first Eastern, Euro Eastern European German team, Eastern German team to be promoted to the Bundesliga this season. Right, so that's two. Um, Union Berlin, Tenerife, Valladolid. Ooh. I think. Yeah, I guess, yeah, no, I'll just, just run, with, run with those ones. Are you happy? You have yeah, to yeah, stop the clock. Look at that. Stopping the clock. Plenty of seconds to spare. <laughs> uh, and you've already got your answers. If yeah. you say which category you're answering for in each uh, case. Teams in Germany's uh, Bundesliga 2, uh, Union Berlin. Union Berlin. Uh, teams in Secunda Division, uh, Tenerife. Tenerife. And Valladolid. And Valladolid. OK, of those three, which is your best shot? The pointless uh, answer. Let's say Union Berlin. OK, uh, we'll Union go. Berlin goes last. Tenerife, because people go to Tenerife. Put that aside. OK, Tenerife first. first. And then... And yeah, Valladolid. Valladolid. In the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got Tenerife, Valladolid and Union Berlin. Three very good answers on the board there. Let's hope one of those turns out to be pointless and wins you that jackpot. What would you like to do with it? 5,000 quid, Al. Uh, 5,000 pounds <laughs> worth of ice sculpture of the pointless trophy for the head table at the wedding, I think, would be quite suitable. <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, Melanie, what about you? My daughter just bought her wedding dress, i.e. I've just bought her wedding dress. And so my uh, clothing fund has depleted, so I'd buy myself an outfit for the wedding, so. definitely. <laughs> and a, a Massive proper hat. hat. Yes. What is your daughter's name? Is what Chloe. She She's called Chloe. 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 Chloe, you should have been here. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, very best of luck. Thank you. Such lovely things to spend that prize money on. Let's hope one of these answers will win that jackpot for you. Tenerife was your first answer in this case. We were looking for teams in Spain's second division. If Tenerife is pointless, you leave here with £5,000. How many people said Tenerife? That's right. Now, let's just find out. If Tenerife takes us all the way down to zero, you will leave here with £5,000. How will we get down? It's still going, still going, still going to a Tenerife. Oh! Whoa! It's one! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And it 
that was your first answer. Yeah, yeah. As, as you said, you thought some people might remember that one. So let's move on to your second answer. Valladolid or Valladolid, <laughs> if you want to say it that way. Again, we're looking for teams in Spain's second division. Let's find out if Valladolid is correct. Let's find out if it's pointless for £5,000. Oh. oh. must have been promoted. Oh. <laughs> Violin, I'm afraid. Oh. An incorrect answer. <sighs> Everything's now riding on your third and final answer. Union Berlin. In this case, we were looking for teams in Germany's second division, Zweite Bundesliga. Let's find out. Union Berlin. Is it right? Is it pointless for five thousand pounds? It is right. It's right. Your first answer was Tenerife. It took us all the way down to one. Violin turned out to be incorrect. However, Union Berlin takes us down into single figures. Still going down, still going down, still going down. Yeah! 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 Very well done. Uh, that is brilliant. Congratulations. Union Berlin was a pointless answer, which means you take home today's jackpot of £5,000. Very well done. Yeah! That was beautifully done. That was gutsily done as well when you took on that category because normally people go, oh, no, I'll do, I'll do your category, but you knew you knew something very, very well played. The real winner here is Chloe, of course. We all know <laughs> that. Um, uh, Valladolid have been promoted up to uh, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the top uh, league in Spain. Our... But, you know, who cares? <laughs> um, let's take a look at the pointless answers in the different categories. Here's Italy, Brescia, Lecce, Padova, Palermo. You could have had Ascoli, uh, Cremonese, Perugia, Pescara as well. All those are pointless answers. The only ones that weren't were Livorno, uh, Verona and Venezia. Everyone else is a pointless answer. Those German second string teams. Magdeburg, Ingolstadt, Duisburg, uh, Dinamo Dresden. Everyone there apart from uh, Cologne, St. Pauli, Hamburg uh, and Darmstadt. Those are the only ones that scored any points. All the other teams were pointless. And finally, Spain's Segunda, Deportivo were a pointless answer there. Osasuna, Zaragoza, Sporting Gijan as well. Everyone there pointless, but often uh, Malaga, Las Palmas, uh, Mallorca and Tenerife. Very, very well done. If you've got any of those at home, I'm sorry we don't give you £5,000. But congratulations <laughs> in the studio. Beautifully played from start to finish, wasn't yeah, it? Absolutely right. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to our winning players, Alan Melanie, who take away today's jackpot of £5,000. Well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>